Hey everyone, I'm um, just making a video to go through the questions that went up on the page um, yesterday. So, first question was from uh, Deirdre Stanley who said her weight hasn't budged in a while and um, she's not using like the weighing scales to fully track everything. Um, so just wondering kind of what else would be going on. It says I could be up, I could be down a pound one day and up the next. Um, has age anything to do with it? And she's also been doing CrossFit using heavier weight. So, um, yeah, so that, yeah, that's kind of the issue with using like a single metric to track progress of using only a scale because particularly if you've been doing more weights and stuff like that, in theory what may have happened is let's say for example you weigh 70 kilos and let's say you weighed 70 kilos and now you weigh 70 kilos still but initially that 70 kilos consisted of like 50 kilos of lean mass and 20 kilos of fat mass and now your 70 kilos consists of like 55 kilos lean mass and 15 kilos fat mass. That's like a full five kilos different of fat. Uh, so five kilos less fat, but you, the weighing scale wouldn't tell you that. The weighing scale would have you the very same. So that's why like body fat or pictures are a really good thing to go off. Because in scenarios like that, where you may not necessarily see big difference on the, cha on the scale, you should have other metrics that you can track progress. So using like fitness scores using pictures or um like fitness scores would be like are you getting stronger are you getting fitter are you getting faster i used to be able to do 5k in 25 minutes now i can do it in 22 so you've gotten fitter and um, i used to be able to do 15 push-ups and now i can do 25 so that means you've gotten stronger so even if your weight is the same but those physical performance things have gone up then you've improved so um that's the issue with only having the scale now if you've weight to lose and if like fat loss is the goal, we should still see a decrease in weight. Um, and in theory, again, without knowing the exact things, like if your weight, overall weight, isn't changing, then like you're, you wouldn't be in a calorie deficit. You're, what's happening there is you've got a certain amount of energy you consume through food, which is like your cal calorie or energy intake, and you've got a certain amount that you expend through exercise. And if you're weight is hovering around the same then like you've whether you've known it or not you've figured out a way to eat eat a certain amount for the exercise you do and they kind of cancel each other out whereas if we want to create a deficit and have your weight go down we want to like decrease a little bit on food and then have exercise there or further up exercise and then your um, weight will decrease whereas if someone's weight has increased it means like their exercise or energy output is there and nutrition has increased so then like if this surplus and that means your weight's going up so um, age does have a factor in it in terms of like uh, females in particular will lose muscle mass as we age um, and you know metabolism can kind of slow down a little bit but generally I wouldn't think age is the, the big factor there I think like one might be your body composition might be changing in terms of like you may have been putting on some muscle and losing some fat so pictures or some performance measurements will uh, identify that for you and if it's the case that like nothing has changed that way and scale just hasn't changed i would think that you're probably not in a calorie deficit then and um, so it might be worth tightening up on things there doing the calorie um calculator doing the calorie challenge figuring out where you're at and going off that because um we should be able to control it and um, then as opposed to it fluctuating um lisa marie has asked about sugars in fruit so she's trying to cut out as much sugar as i can so yeah, in general, like we'll always say, we're never going to turn people off eating fruit. Like fruit is a really good source of lots of uh, vitamins and minerals. It's a really healthy food. Like fr fruit isn't fruit isn't the issue in terms of like obesity being the issue it is now and type 2 diabetes being so prevalent now in adults and teenagers and stuff like that. Now fruit on top of all of the other sugar can be an issue. So usually... I would look at trying to address all the other sh sugars first. So it's, it's usually not a case that someone's having the odd apple or orange or banana. It's a case of having like all the other sugar during their day and then that doesn't help things. But I'll never turn someone off and say like you shouldn't have any fruit. Um, but we can minimize the amount of fruit we have. And especially if someone has a sweet tooth and they're like, right, well, I'm not having any cakes or cookies or that anymore. But then you're replacing that with three bananas a day or two like two big servings of fruit that you wouldn't normally have you're just like replacing that sugar with natural sugar so we do want to tackle it and um, so like lower like in terms of fruits like ideally if we're looking at like six to eight servings of fruit and veg a day 
ideally like five of that is vegetables and then like you have two or three for fruit and um, and what we can do is to minimize the impact of fruit is like have it close to training times when that sugar is going to be more useful so that's why we always have it in your phase one and then other things to consider with fruit like lower sugar fruit um, are going to be things like berries are going to be really good so like raspberries blueberries strawberries kiwi is like actually a form of a berry ones that aren't usually considered fruits like avocados oils they're going to be uh or avocados and olives they're going to be like low sugar but they're going to be higher in fat but um apple is also going to have like a bit of fiber and take a bit of time to digest so usually that's a, an okay one so usually we go as a quick rule of thumb would be like apples and berries anytime watermelon is also good as is grapefruit um and things like oranges and bananas and stuff try to keep to around training times a little bit more but it's more about the overall dose like um you know watermelon might be an okay fruit from a sugar point of view but if you eat too much of it you're going to end up with too much sugar anyway so i'd look at your total sugar overall and um, throughout the day and then see if fruit um being added to that as opposed to fruit being the the main issue um but yeah i mean I, I i would use the bare minimum amount so if you're having a smoothie it should be like a fruit the fruit smoothie shouldn't be like a half an apple a banana and a load of berries and it's this like sweet really sweet drink it should be like the bare minimum amount of fruit you need for the flavor you desire um so laura williams has said and asked i'm up around seven each day and don't eat till half 10 or 11 i think if i eat earlier i'll be hungry and won't last till lunchtime am i wrong to leave it so long without eating in the morning um, could it make me hold on to fat so the only thing that makes us like it, it's not so much like the like intermittent fasting is a really popular thing at the moment and basically that's just scheduled times of not eating um, and scheduled windows of eating and I'll do that a lot of times myself and um, and it's a good thing a good challenge for people to do so I might post a, a separate video on that and um, if people want more information on intermittent fasting but the most common approach for people to intermittent fast is just to skip breakfast now usually they won't eat till like midday and um, and then you'll try eat all your food between 12 and 8 and it just encourages your body to go periods of not eating and not digesting and just having um your body just deal with what you've kind of got and if we look from an evolutionary kind of standpoint like a thousand years ago we didn't have fridges and freezers that like we have mechanisms in our bodies to you know we don't start to death after a day or after like not eating for 12 or 14 or 16 hours so um i'd be a fan of it but there has to be a structure to it so it should be like it shouldn't be a case of you don't eat till 10 some days or eat till 10 or, or eat at seven or eight other days so there's just to be a structure that you make a decision and that's what you stick with if you're able to skip breakfast and not eat till 10 or 11 usually you'll tend to eat lower calories throughout that day just because you have a shorter eating window but once people start eating then i'd want them to be eating fairly regularly and hitting that protein number and so getting protein in each meal and um, so it's not a case that that will cause you to hold on to fat or anything like that and um, if it's just the other thing is like if you if you skip breakfast like skipping breakfast is generally seen as an unhealthy habit because what happens is people that skip breakfast kind of willy-nilly don't end up eating those calories later on in the day but if you're making a, a conscious decision to like skip breakfast you still have to hit those calories that you're designated and you still have to hit those protein numbers that you're designated um, throughout the rest of the day. So you can skip breakfast and not eat till later on and just survive in water till that time. It's not going to do your body any harm, but I just want you to maybe have a structure and a reason to it so you stick to it from that side of things as opposed to just, just deciding on that day or on a whim. Um, so Karina then has asked, we have white potatoes as a phase two now, or just sweet potato, or what's the difference? So, um, yeah, so like the, there's always a bit of a potato debate, but it's really not too big a deal, um, wifey sweet. So sweet potatoes are going to have like a lower glycemic index and glycemic load, which means that the release of energy from those carbs is dissipated a little bit, and you'll get like a slower release of energy. It'll have less of an impact on insulin, and generally that's going to be a really good thing, and that's generally what we, we recommend. Sweet potatoes are lower calorie and lower carb than white potato and have like some more vitamins like vitamin A and there's a few other things that are slightly different. But in general, um, 
in that phase two time when we're having like potatoes for recovery, I'm not too concerned whether it's white or, or sweet. Um, for preference, I, I, I'll always prefer sweet and it might be like slightly better, but it's not something that is... It's going to be the, the making of a, a healthy day or a healthy meal or anything like that. Um, particularly because if we're if it's in phase two in that um, recovery window, like that higher glycemic, higher glycemic load is, is going towards recovery anyway. So it's not going to be too bad. I'd be more concerned about how they're uh, cooked and stuff like that. So like obviously like anything fried or that is going to be a, a lot worse than something that's just like boiled or mashed, say. So, yeah, sorry, that's a long one. But um, any further questions, pop them in the question below, and I'll post the intermittent fasting video also. Thanks.